in a world full of uncertainty of hope for the future and love. There exist movers and shakers, doers and providers. Let's focus on outstanding agents of love. Any love agents celebrate their art of love towards others. Welcome to Focus Love. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue sur Focus Love, le numéro spécial d'Annie Love Agent qui vous emmène à la découverte d'un spécial Love Agent. Elles sont nombreuses. On leur donne différents types de noms. Abusé, trafiqué, prostitué, fille de joie. Moi j'aime à les appeler des êtres humains comme vous et moi. Elles sont parties de leur pays avec des rêves plein la tête, avec des promesses d'un ami ou d'un amant ou d'un parent ou même d'une personne étrangère, juste pour trouver la terre promise, juste pour transformer leur vie. Mais malheureusement, elles se sont retrouvées coincées au cœur d'événements qu'elles ne pouvaient en aucun cas maîtriser. Pour ces personnes qui sont marginalisées, violentées et qui sont émotionnellement instables aujourd'hui, Annie Lovejane a fait pour vous la découverte d'un groupe incroyable de personnes qui ont fait vocation d'être cette main tendue, cette oreille attentive et ce cœur toujours ouvert pour aider. Ces personnes, ces pistes Maker, allons à leur découverte. A tout de suite it's our pleasure to receive you, Ma and Sam. You are welcome. Please, can you introduce yourself? Thank you, Madam. It's a pleasure being with you. My name is Timothy Olaren. And this is my wife, MC Olaren. We are both accountants, we are both pastors, and we are both co founders of the Peacemakers Mission. Yeah, our mission is to make disciples of women who have been trapped into prostitution, both from Nigeria and the Benin Republic, to educate them and give them proper training in order to equip them and make them uh, able to, able to uh, rescue others also. And our major focus is to rehabilitate them, uh, reintegrate them back into the normal society, empower them, train them until they become worthy women, worthy working women and mothers. The Peacemaker is a Christian outreach ministry established 15 years ago with a mission whose focus of interest has always been where the mainline churches are paid little or no attention. This is principally girls and women trafficked into prostitution, especially those from Nigeria and Benin Republic. They do this by evangelism and vocational training. They also run a nursery and primary school where pupils are trained on the basic and fundamental Christian doctrines and principles as they build on their academic pursuits. The peacemakers are locally in the semi-rural community of Semekbuji in Benin Republic and as we have seen their facilities are simple and almost despondent because of lack of funds to complete and furnish the two-story building they are located. In order to meet their feeding needs, the center has a small farm. Farm. I have a lot of plants. They are planted, crops, vegetables, maize, 
tomatoes. Potato. Cassava. Mrs. Olarinde explained to us that an encounter in 2001 motivated her to start this mission. She had gone to purchase materials including tie and dye, which was to be used for training the village women who had been worn to Christ on cloth making vocation as a means to help themselves from poverty. It was around 6 p.m. She went to Junke region of Kotonu, where she was directed to buy the materials. Unknown to her, it was the red light district of Kotonu. Just as she finished buying the materials, and she saw that a very long line of girls has been formed on the two edges of the street. Out of curiosity, she asked what was going on, and was told, that the girls and women were her sisters from Nigeria and that they were all there on prostitution. She spotted a girl who she guessed could not be more than 15 years old. She got talking to this girl who eventually confessed that she has been deceived and betrayed by her very own blood sister who sold her into sex slavery in Kotonou under false pretext. She begged Mrs. Olarinde to help her get away from there and get back to her family in Nigeria. Days later, Mrs. Olarinde and a newly formed anti-trafficking team succeeded in getting the girl away from the district and ensured her return back to Nigeria to her people. On second visit to the region, she was threatened and held hostage for eight hours by eight hefty giant men who were the leaders of the prostitution ring. They eventually let her go the next day, but that only cemented her resolve to help and rescue more women and girls. Since then, over 50 women have been rescued and many have been sent back to Nigeria or reunited with their families. They have been able to achieve this with a team of only 10 teachers and 4 workers. We met some of these ladies. One of such ladies is Favor. She came to Bini to come and pick me. That is Edo, Edo City, to come and pick me to this Benin. When I got there, I found out that this is what she's doing for us. It was late. With Favor wanted to read mass communication but could never afford even secondary school. Now, she has two kids from different men she met before she was rescued, and she just wants to focus on her hairdressing business now. She hopes her children will be able to go to the university. Favor case is unfortunately very common. Majority of them are deceived by pimps who promise them jobs, better life, and opportunities abroad. Cotonou, the economic capital of Benin Republic, is always the first landing port before the traffic are shipped to other countries in West Africa and route Europe and North America. Doris, another of the beneficiary of Peacemaker Rehabilitation, was promised a job in a restaurant in Abidjan. She was taken out of Nigeria at the age of 17. Nobody to help, no help so that I would start my mom business to go further. So God sent one big woman Peacemaker for me okay for the year. Doris is 36 now and has finally decided to leave prostitution but has lost all to the last man she was with 
She now lives in barely subhuman condition and wishes to have found to help her second hand clothes business. Peacemaker also offers vocational training for young girls who wish to improve their skill sets. Alice is a young and intelligent woman who misled into a long unwanted relationship when she's still a teenager. Can you tell us about yourself? Uh, my name is Alice. I'm 24 years old. I'm a baby. When I'm a 15 years old, I got a woman that promised me that she wants to marry me. And at that time, I've not, known, I've not yet known the world of God very well. So that is the one that made me to know how powers will stand very well. But I thank God for the advising from mommy and daddy. So they helped me teach me the word of God. And God helped me and I escaped. So after that, they gave me advice that I should continue my work. And they are the one that helped me to get all this much. Our major challenges is inadequate finances uh, in running the safe house for the accommodation and the training and the education of the children of these women. Then another challenge we face is from the hotel managers where the girls are coming from. They want to collect their uh, bills that are being these girls have been killed before leaving. And the, the other challenge is uh, from the pimps who brought them into prostitution, the traffickers themselves, they want to pay, collect their paybacks, payback bills from us since they are now with us. So the other challenge we also face is from the boyfriends of these, these girls. They, they, they are not always happy by this um, uh, where we are trying to take away the girls, separating them from the girls and they threaten our lives sometimes. And then the other challenge is from our fellow brothers and sisters in the church, especially the pastors, who feel we are bringing an holy and unholy uh, people to join the, the church so that um, other girls in the church will not copy bad things from them, will not get contaminated. And then the girls themselves, we face challenges from the girls due to the nature of their past experiences. They are undergoing trauma and they are very, very emotionally unstable. Um, that's one of some of the challenges. What are your plans going forward? By the grace of God, we hope to have a 10 acre land for a rehabilitation center and a vocational center. Accommodate these women, the girls, and their children. God helping us. And apart from that, we are trusting God that this year she will be able to have uh, a 20 well furnished home for 12 girls that will be well accommodated in a very good environment. Merci d'avoir suivi ce premier numéro de Focus Love. En attendant le prochain, je vous dis au revoir et à très vite.